the presidential pardon power is essentially an executive version supremely lodged in the presidency to meet out the ultimate discretion, which is to wipe away a criminal conviction altogether. This is a power that's lodged in the presidency, and it's a power that goes back to some of the texts in political philosophy leading into the founding. And so if you read somebody like John Locke, for example, he would write about the fundamental challenge with the rule of law. And it was this, if you have a law and you, and you have a very specific law that's written down, the idea of the rule of law is that it applies to everyone equally. The problem is that it often applies to people in practice that the spirit of the law really was not intended to apply to. It's like a fishing net where you catch some fish but you catch some other things too and sometimes the law catches up within it some cases that don't look like they obviously should, should have been caught up with that. The one difference maybe is this. John Locke envisions what he calls the prerogative power and what he defines as a president, or in, in this case an executive, acting contrary to the law for the good of the public. And it's out of this basic idea of this prerogative power that the idea of a pardon power comes. Locke said that if there was an abuse of the prerogative power, there was no other appeal but to heaven, which in the parlance of the day meant we're going to have to fight about it. In our Constitution, arguably, it's not simply an appeal to heaven if you have an abuse of the pardon power, but it's an appeal to the people through the very political process of impeachment.